everybody, this is Perch. I'm going to get rich. Yes, once again, I've been approached by a high-value sponsor willing to sponsor the Perch show, so stick it, Mumbles. People are willing to actually put money into this show. And this one, let's let's get right to it. It says, uh, hello, I am the PR manager of mobile game Black Desert Online. Our team got acquainted with your YouTube channel. I'd love to know how that happened. And we would like to offer you cooperation. I could use some cooperation. We are interested in letting you tell your subscribers about our game. Uh, You're interested in that, are you? Okay. Well, I'm doing it right now. Black Desert Online. I'm assuming there's a desert, and it's an online game, and the the desert is black for some reason. Or maybe this is a very racist game. I don't know. Black Desert. Oh, they're going to tell us. Black Desert is an MMORPG. Okay. That combines elements of several games and genres, real-time strategy, role-playing game, and life simulator. A distinctive feature are large-scale battles uh, requiring well-coordinated teamwork and calibrated strategic decisions. None of that half-assed running around, uh, you know, spray and gun stuff, huh? Uh, Also, the proprietary engine allowed the developers to implement a completely seamless open world, complete freedom of character customization, and much more. You want to run around spraying uh, other characters down with machine guns with your dong hanging out? This Black Desert Online gives you complete freedom of character customization. Yeah, that's right. If you are interested in our offer, please let us know, and we will send you terms of reference. WhatsApp contact number 128-910-3470. Okay, sincerely, Black Desert team, the entire team. I They didn't mention anything about paying me. It's just an offer. The offer is, wait a minute, uh, this, I, I, uh, shit, I jumped the gun. There is no money involved. They're, the offer is they're interested in telling the subscribers about our game. Damn it, I've been tricked. Okay, forget about that. Black Desert Online, complete garbage. You don't want it. You know, who wants to play a game where you're running around on a, Black Desert with your dong out. Nobody. All right, let's get to a real mail here. It says, uh, what can we do? All right, Perch. I like the, the simplicity of it. Perch. Not hello, Perch. Not how you doing, Perch. Not you're a great guy, Perch. Uh, but just Perch. I've been listening to your channel for a while now. But this first time, I felt like writing an email. I know you get grief for riding the fence. Yeah. Uh, okay. On a lot of issues. But I think that's because we become a country that goes to the extremes. Ah, you think? No, <laughs> I'd be in a jackass, but this is a very nice mail. I truly believe that most of us, on many um, of the controversial uh, issues of our times, are more modern. Yet, yeah, uh, surveys and endless data says that is true. However, we allow the crazy people to have the biggest voice, mostly because, you know, we're all out trying to do our work and, you know, function as a society, and the people who are the nut jobs have found a good way to just yell and scream about things. And then us, while we're off doing our, you know, stuff in society, trying to get our job done, we're like, hey, you know what would be entertaining is listening to crazy people online. And so we give them that audience. It's like, it's like, you know, why would you watch a reality show? Most of them, some of them, I mean, some of them are fun, especially those Japanese ones where like they, you know, put you in a fish tank and then like drop electric, electrical things into it and see if you see how long you can live there before you, you fry to death or uh, what was it? There was a Japanese game show where they had a bunch of shoes lined up and in one of the shoes was uh, dog crap. And then one by one, the contestants have to put their foot into the shoe until they hit the unlucky shoe. This is a game show. Anyway, uh, lots of lots of crazy stuff. Was there's a, a, another one where there's like a there's a staircase steps, and then they uh, coat the entire thing in oil, and then they they have people in body suits also coated with oil try and get to the top of the staircase, and of course they're falling all over the place. And then there was like an extreme version. Where after a while, after like two minutes of trying to get up the staircase and falling back down again because everything's slippery, then they put a bunch of, uh, of uh, like spiders and scorpions down in the bottom <laughs> to, make it, to make it really dangerous if you fell down. Anyway, uh, that's uh, Japan. Sorry, I got off, off track here. All right, back to the mail. Um, I've listened to some of the other... Uh, your moderate takes on things are why I've stuck with your channel. Thank you. I've listened to some of the other channels out there, but honestly, I got tired of them crying about everything. There does come a point that if you hate something as much as some people claim they hate current comics, you would stop devoting time to it. 
I like the way that's said, by the way. It's not just about the money. It becomes about your time. Like, you know, if you think that your time on the planet is finite, uh, why, why are you for the 500th time speculating on how gay Batman is? Like, I mean, there, there just, there comes a point where it's like uh, the, you know, the, the return benefit is, is not good. All right. That leads me to the back to the mail. That leads me to our actual question. What can we, the fans do to actually move the needle on improving comics? I predominantly read Marvel comics and by no means hate comics, hence why I still read them, but I am disappointed. When new comics come out, or events, I try and get myself psyched up to them, but just get let down. The entire new X-Men, uh, X-Comic run is a great example. I was excited, then I started reading them. It seems like the big two are trying to change things up to bring in a new batch of readers. But what they seem to be accomplishing is not getting readers while alienating current fans. You would assume that a business would be financially motivated, but they seem to uh, to not heed the sales numbers or fan complaints. So is there anything else fans can do to try and force them to write the ship, or should I just start rereading old comics? Well, you should reread old comics, because there's always some gems in there, and it's uh, it's good stuff. It'll make you feel good, and that's, it's always important to remember why you love comics. Um, in terms of what you can do, you know, the simple, obvious answer, same answer I've given many times, uh, buy the you know put money into the comics that you like. At least make sure that you're speaking with your wallet. This has two impacts, one for sure and one that will build up over time. The for sure impact is that you feel good about the money you're spending. And you feeling good about the money you're spending goes a long way to improving your self, you know, your, your sanity. And uh, it just at least keeps you from entering into a dangerous uh, you know, cycle of just self-loathing and all kinds of stuff. Just it's only, it's only spend your money. Be very, very protective of your cash just like you're protective of your time. The second benefit is that, unfortunately, comics isn't run uh, enough like a business. And so, whereas the sales numbers would tell an immediate picture and you would see people jump into an immediate response with comics, it takes longer than that. But it does eventually catch up. You do eventually get to the point where, you know, you go, I, uh, I don't like this and I'm not paying for it. And enough time goes by, the company's like, wow, this is making us no money, and we might give it a ride for a little while, but we're, we're not, you know, we're going to stop. And this, this goes for creators as well, although it does take longer. Creators, if you, if you are willing to look at the big picture, meaning the 10-year picture, you will see the creators who, you know, write the same kind of nonsense that do not sell. They don't go as fast as they should. They don't uh, get rolled off or, or, you know, get forced to improve or whatever it happens to be. That doesn't happen at a good pace, but it does eventually happen. It happens just by the nature of the market eventually does catch up to these people. Uh, should it happen faster? Absolutely. But it does happen in the, in the big picture. So if you make sure you're spending your money where it belongs, you are putting yourself in a better spot. And then the, uh, the, the thing that is probably if, if you're trying to enact change, at a publisher, after you've taken care of your wallet. The other thing to do is, uh, and I do find this works, not nearly enough, and not nearly as, as dramatic as you would think, but in a, in a very productive way, promote people that make things you like. Uh, you got to use this. The you know, Marvel and DC and a lot of the comic companies are way too obsessed with social media. They put way too much stock into it. But you can use that slightly to your advantage by utilizing social media to over-promote people in comics you like. I heard from, uh, D some, from somebody at DC that Hawkman, that title, actually survived more issues than it was planned to. Six more issues than, the you know, it was, it was basically the sales were low. And it survived six issues longer than originally planned. Because the social, because the, the people who are fans of Hawkman and that book were relentless on Twitter and Facebook about it. They, they were Hawk, Hawkman groups and their Hawkman stands and all kinds of like, there was just a lot there. And so it did influence their decision. It should have been the sales numbers and then making good market decisions to try and improve things. But if they're going to be obsessed with social media, at the very least, use it to aggressively hype up the things you like. It, it doesn't, it's not foolproof, 
It doesn't work every time. Some, you know, there's still plenty that gets ignored, but it does help. So if there's something you like at a company, make sure the company knows it and, and keep it. Think about it this way. If you're annoyed by this, like you shouldn't have to do this. Think about how annoyed some of these Marvel people are. If you continuously hype a comic that they don't really have a lot of confidence on and it gets a lot of attention and they feel like, well, you know, the people that we are uh, playing to on Twitter are going to be pissed if we, uh, you know, it, it, it make their life difficult, I guess is my point. There's a sick pleasure you can get in that as well. Uh, overall, you know, I, and I guess one more piece of advice. If there's a creator on a book, I like Phil Kennedy Johnson on, on his Superman book. I enjoyed that run. Make sure he knows it. It may not help anything. It may not uh, do much to, uh, you know, for DC giving him more work or anything else. But at the very least, it makes him feel better. And him feeling better, at least you're giving credit to somebody who is uh, doing something you enjoy. And there, there's some power in that. Anyway, that's my thought. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for listening. And and forget Black Desert Online. Garbage.